I now give the floor to His Excellency uh, Marcelo Ebrard Casaubon, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Mexico. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, please receive the greetings of the President of Mexico, Andres Manuel López Obrador, and of all Mexicans. Mexico welcomes the fact that our General Assembly has managed to meet despite the fragile health situation, since only through collective and common action will we be able to tackle the formidable challenges that we face. The pandemic has highlighted the need to have a strong and effective multilateral system, and we believe it is unacceptable that the spaces for the most basic solidarity among states should close. Meanwhile, we are facing greater misinformation, denial of scientific evidence, and the with xenophobic withdrawal of some entire sectors of our societies. This unprecedented crisis cannot be overcome with unilateral or isolated actions, but rather through renewed cooperation and genuine international solidarity. Mr. President, since the outset, Mexico has noted the need to guarantee equitable and universal access to medicines, vaccines and other medical items. And we are doing it once again with a sense of urgency and that because while 33% of the global population in high-income countries has already received at least one dose of the vaccine, only 1.4% of people in low-income countries have had access to a vaccine. So I repeat, 33% in rich countries is... 33% of the population in rich countries have already received one dose of the vaccine and 1.4% of people in low-income countries have had access to a vaccine. We need to promote vaccines being considered as global public goods. This means, firstly, recognising the competency of the World Health Organisation as the authority that certifies vaccines. The, any existing differentiation or discrimination in the recognition of vaccines jeopardizes socioeconomic recovery and the efficacy of mechanisms such as the COVAX platform. For this reason, Mexico presented a proposal to the G20 so that the whole international community could recognize, without any form of condition, the vaccines approved by the World Health Organization. It is time to give our full backing to the highest international health authority. Mexico will contribute to the process to reforming the international health system to prevent and address the next pandemics and health emergencies in a timely manner. In line with our capacities and bearing in mind the considerable progress made by the vaccine program that has been implemented nationally by the government of President Manuel López Obrador, Mexico has already donated more than one million vaccines to kindred countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, such as Belize, Bolivia, Guatemala, El Salvador, Jamaica, Honduras and Paraguay. And together with Argentina, we are working to provide and enable the production of vaccines in Latin America and to be able to provide vaccines to more than 17 countries. Global warming, moreover, is the other great challenge of our time. At the end of 2020, Mexico presented its updated nationally determined contribution reiterating its support for the Paris Agreement as well as its interest in working in cooperation and collaboration with the international community and all interested parties. Mexico's contribution doesn't only contain mitigation commitments but also a strong adaptation component 
This adaptation component recognises the country's vulnerability to the impacts of climate change and the urgent need to build resilience to them. For this reason, the Mexican adaptation measures include nature-based solutions and ecosystem-based adaptation approaches. For example, the Sowing Life or Sembrando Vida program promoted by the Mexican government is one of the largest reforestation programs in the world. To date, we have sown 700 million trees. This not only allows us to address environmental degradation, but it also helps to generate opportunities for decent employment and to restore the social fabric. Mr. President, Mexico congratulates the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, on his appointment for a second term, and we congratulate him on his report, Our Common Agenda. I wish to go on record with regard to Mexico's support for some of the conceptual changes suggested in the report that coincide with the vision that we have on how to revitalize the UN. The reconstruction of our societies that have been affected by all forms of crises over the last 20 years depends on the ability to relaunch solidarity among states. This should be a new social contract founded on the obligations that we have made in favour of human rights. In this context, we support the identification of complementary measures to those traditional indicators of gross domestic product to assess the level of development of nations. Turning now to Security Council reform, Mexico will continue to be a constructive actor to ensure that this body is more representative, democratic, transparent and efficient. The purported creation of new permanent seats is contrary to the sovereign equality of states and the essential principles of democracy. A reform that only that increases only non-permanent seats with long-term mandates and with possibilities for immediate re-election is viable and would represent a substantial change to the functioning of the body to which we entrust the maintenance of international peace and security. In light of the frequent paralysis of the Security Council to shoulder its responsibility in certain conflicts, particularly where mass atrocities are committed, Mexico, together with France, has proposed that the right to veto of the five permanent members be regulated. More than 100 states support us in this initiative, which we will continue to promote. During its current participation in the Security Council, Mexico has acted in accordance with its foreign policy principles. We have, above all, promoted civilian protection, unhindered humanitarian access, full compliance with international humanitarian law and the effective participation of women in peace processes. We have sought to reduce human suffering and to put people at the heart of the Security Council's action in situations as diverse as Afghanistan, Myanmar, Syria, Tigray and Yemen, just to cite a few. We will continue to call the attention of the international community to the irresponsible arms trade and trafficking, as well as its link with the increase in violence, murders and the commission of high-impact crimes that affect public security and limit their possibilities for development. We hope that the Council will be able to take measures to ensure that there is stricter control of small arms and light weapons because these fuel conflicts around the world. In serving as the pro tempore secretary of the community of Latin American and Caribbean states, Mexico has promoted unity and solidarity within our region. Two years after taking on this considerable responsibility, CELAC has demonstrated its relevance to define joint avenues of action. In addition, it is a platform that gives a greater voice to Latin America and Caribbean in multilateral fora. We are honoured to have welcomed more than 30 delegations of heads of state, ministers and other high-ranking officials from CELAC member countries to our country last week. This demonstrates the robustness of the largest and most important polit political cooperation and dialogue 
mechanism in our region. Mexico welcomes the beginning of the negotiation and dialogue process between the government and unitary platform of Venezuela, facilitated by Norway and whose meetings were held in our country. We believe that it is through dialogue and negotiation that a solution must be found for the Venezuelan people on the future of Venezuela. In the same vein, and in light of the severe economic and health crisis at a global level, it is urgent to bring an end to the economic blockade against Cuba. Instead of unilateral measures, we need to implement solidarity-based measures and measures of mutual support to promote the economic growth and development of our peoples. Ladies and gentlemen, up to now, the economic and social recovery from the crisis generated by the COVID-19 pandemic has been characterised by inequality. Mexico supports measures to ensure that least developed countries can benefit from multilateral support mechanisms for debt relief, such as the G20's Debt Service Suspension Initiative. However, middle-income countries, we must also point out, also need this type of mechanism. These countries, as is the case of Mexico, represent 75% of the global population and they are home to 62% of people in situations of poverty. Against this backdrop, we call on international financial institutions, the World Bank, the private sector and, and the international banking sector and all relevant actors in this area to promote measures to prevent our countries incurring unsustainable levels of debt and to manage to direct their scarce resources to the socio-economic recovery from the crisis. Mexico reaffirms its commitment to respect uh, the respect, protection and promotion of human rights, particularly for groups in situations of vulnerability and those who have historically been discriminated, and that from a gender-based and in uh, gender-based perspective, including economic, social, cultural, environmental rights, my country will continue to combat hate speech, discrimination, xenophobia, racism, and related forms of intolerance, as well as violent extremism in any of its manifestations, including white supremacism. Supremacy. We have committed to the objectives of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration and the Global Compact on Refugees. Migration is not a pernicious phenomenon. On the contrary, all of our societies have benefited at a certain time in their historic development from the contribution of migrants. It falls to all of us to respect and defend the human rights of everybody, regardless of their migratory status. In order to ensure safe, orderly and regular migratory flows, international cooperation is a crucial element to ensure that origin, transit and host communities can build their capacities without having to resort to emigration. Mexico is a country with a long-standing tradition for, of solidarity and support for those needing assistance on humanitarian grounds. Hence, we granted international protection to hundreds of people from Afghanistan who were in situations of extreme vulnerability to particularly women and girls. Also to more than 18,000 people coming from Chile and Colombia, as well as more than 70,000 people coming from Central America and other countries in the world. The feminist foreign policy adopted by my country in 2020 is in line with our aim to promote a more equitable, fair and egalitarian society. To that end, we have exchanged good practices on the matter with other countries that already have a similar foreign policy. This led to the creation of the Global Partner Network on Feminist Foreign Policies. The Generation Equality Forum, co-hosted by Mexico and France with the support of UN Women and in partnership with civil society organisations and young people's groups, was a great and a major moment for the mobilisation of all sectors around a series of transformative actions to benefit the full enjoyment of human rights of women and girls. Peace is possible only if women and girls participate actively. Mexico, together with Ireland, co-chairs the group of experts on women, peace and security in the Security Council and it has promoted the mainstreaming of the gender perspective and human rights-based perspective in the work of that body. Mr President, 
Mexico was there at the foundation of the UN 76 years ago, and it remains committed to its principles and to the charter that gave rise to it. It falls to this generation that we comprise to make the adjustments required by the present times and that are demanded by our peoples. Thank you very much. I thank, I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Mexico for his statement.